Hey guys, Casey Ferris here. Thanks for checking out another video of mine here on YouTube. Today we are talking about log. I've gotten a lot of questions about how does log work? What is log? How do I shoot log? How do I grade log? First of all, there's a whole bunch of different types of log footage and it's honestly not that magical. It's kind of like this confusing thing that's scary for people, but here's a really basic explanation about what log is. Let's pretend that this is real life. This is just what your eyes see. This is an HDR picture, so we can see a lot more brightness than we normally would be able to see with a camera. So this is like real life, something like what your eyes would see, okay? There's a whole bunch of different brightnesses here that our eyes can see. Everything from stupid dark to really dark to dark, getting darker, well, a little darker than mids, to middle brightness, to definitely not bright, to not very bright, to kind of bright, to bright, and even silly bright. Everything is on this spectrum of brightness. And this spectrum is called dynamic range. So it's the difference between the brightest thing in the shot and the darkest thing in the shot. Pretty much the point of log is to record as much of this as possible. So normally when we shoot video, a camera can only record like a section of this just because technology, even though it's 2018, we don't have magic things yet. So um, we can only record just a little chunk of this. So depending on your exposure, it's somewhere along this spectrum. Maybe you'll have a shot that can only record things from kind of bright to middle brightness and moving this up and down is the exposure. So that's kind of how this works. So normally with video, we're shooting in a very limited range of brightness. So what log does is try to squeeze a little bit more into this same range. And so, so instead of having kind of bright through middle brightness, we can get the bright stuff and all the way down to getting darker. Still can't get the whole range, but it can get a little bit more and squeeze it into that limited range that a camera can record. The way it does this is by decreasing the contrast before it's recorded to an image. And that gives you information to record even though it's a little bit more compressed in a much wider range of exposure. And when it does that, it comes out looking like this. Here's a pretty high dynamic range shot. We have a lot of dark tones here. We have some light outside of the window, some highlights here. And so this is a range from pretty darn bright to some kind of deep shadows here in her shirt and in the furniture. And it's basically a lot more exposure squeezed into an image, which ends up making that image look, frankly, kind of ugly. Same thing here. This is shot in log, a little bit brighter, but trying to keep some detail here in the background as well as in her face and in her hair, squeezing all of that brightness into the limited brightness that we can actually record. This one here is a little bit less contrasty of an image, but we're gonna take a look at how to grade that since it's also shot in this same log mode. I'm gonna bring up my scopes so that we can take a look at what's going on and we'll bring up the parade. So grading log is pretty much like grading every other image. You just kind of have a scarier starting point. So I have pretty much five steps that I take to grading a log image. The first one is rough it in. We pretty much want to like take a big stab at grading this image. And you can do this two ways. You can either use a LUT that's designed for the type of log that you're shooting. There's different types of log. There's S log, there's C log, there's BMD film. There's V-Log, Cine-like D, Cine-style, Protune, and they do different things to the image, but it's pretty much that same idea of squeezing a bunch of information into what you can record. So the first thing we're gonna do is rough it in, all right? We're gonna take a stab at this. One thing I know needs to happen is I want things to actually be black here. So if I look at my scopes, we'll see that all my blacks are lifted here. So I'm just gonna bring my lift down, just roll down, so that things are actually black, all right? This might not be exactly how we want it to be at the end, but it's a starting point. Next thing is I wanna make sure that anything that's supposed to be bright white is pretty much bright white. And we're just about there. I might just boost the gain just a little bit. And the thing is, if I start to boost the gain too much, we start to lose detail here in the table. And we can see on our scopes, if I bring these up, I'm cutting off some information here at the top. So I don't wanna do that. This might not be exactly how you want it to look, but it's good to see kind of the range that you're working with. Next thing I like to do to rough this in is rough in the saturation. And so I'll just push the saturation up a little bit to see where that lives. I can bring up my vector scope 
make sure my brightness is turned up. And I can add quite a bit of saturation and it still looks pretty good. So there's a rough grade for the shot. That's one way to do it. The other way is you could use a LUT. Either way, I like to have this second node here be a way to rough the image in. So this is just a manual grade, right? I'll make a new version of this grade by hitting Control Y, reset that node. I'm gonna go down to 3D LUT and load an S-Log to Rec 709 LUT. This is available for free, groundcontrolcolor.com. And I'll call this LUT. And there we'll have a pretty similar result. The only difference is a LUT is a pretty general adjustment designed for a well-exposed shot. And so if you have a lot of dark things in your shot or your exposure's off, you'll have to adjust it a little bit. So this one, we do have a lot of dark stuff. And so I might boost my lift a little bit. You'll notice when I do this under the LUT, let me bring this up. And I bring my gain down. Look what happens right here. I recover some of that information. Okay, because a LUT is not perfect. And again, I'm just kind of roughing this in and I want to see I want to see how the shot looks. So now I have good saturation, good contrast, decent exposure for what I want. And that's the first step. The second step is to see what you got. Pretty much what I do is I look at this shot and I decide, okay, what things do I have good exposure on? What things are interesting? And I kind of take note of that. First of all, I have this window I have information there. It's not blown out, but it isn't particularly interesting. So I don't know if I really care that much. It's just like their deck outside. So the middle is really nice. Obviously the person writing is what we want to focus on. This stuff looks nice here. And so I'm just seeing what is in the shot and taking note of what's interesting, what's useful. That's the second step. Third step is to decide what to keep and what to lose. This step is somewhat optional because you might be able to keep everything um, and when I say keep, I mean keep detail and keep information in everything. But odds are, you probably want to focus on something. For this shot, definitely definitely the subject is what we want out here. I don't care if we blow that out or not. One thing I do want to do is probably not blow out the desk. And so that's something to consider too. So now that we've looked at this and figured out what we like, figured out what we want to keep information for, I ask myself, like, what, what do I not like about this shot? First of all, I don't know if I like that I see out the window. It's not particularly interesting. I don't know if I like that she's so dark. It would probably brighten her up a little bit. Over here looks nice. So if it stays like that, that's fine. I don't want to blow out the desk. And now we're actually going to do something. I'm going to make a new node in between my LUT node and my first node here. You could also do this between your manual adjustment node and your first node. And I'm going to bring up my curve and just see what I can do with the curve. One thing is I bet the midtones are gonna have to go up. So I'm gonna push the midtones up in the curves just a little bit, and that's gonna start boosting up my shadows. And so I'm gonna maybe, I can move this end of the curve down to kind of adjust that. Maybe I'll move my point around and see where that feels nice. And I'm still moving the bottom part of the curve because I wanna keep black things black. The problem is if I do this too much, this starts to get really noisy and awful. And so you don't want to go too crazy with this, but to a certain point, you can kind of adjust how this looks. And also, if this is really dark, I don't really need the detail there. I can push it down a little bit to kind of make it a little cleaner. And so this is before and this is after, just with my curves adjustment. And that's pretty good. I could add some saturation if I wanted to, but that's a decent grade for our shot. This is the log version and this is the graded version. If I wanted to, I could also add some windows here. I could add a window here to brighten her face. I could put one here to blow out the window. Those are all things that I could do, but that's the basics of how to grade a log shot. Let's do the same process with this shot. First of all, I'm gonna rough it in. I'm gonna use my LUT again, S-Log2 to Rec 709. And here we see the colors are pretty darn yellow. Might take some yellow out of the gain a little bit. Might push the gain down in my first node to see what I have. And we see I have a little bit more information up here in the highlights. I also might push my lift a little bit cooler to balance that out a little bit. And again, we're kind of just playing with the image right now to see what we can do with it. That's looking like everything's really way too cool. And so I'll probably push my gain back up warm might even desaturate it just a little bit. 
Maybe push the gain up, because if I lose this sun, it's okay. I can lose the sun. It's the brightest thing in the solar system. It's probably okay if it clips a little bit. And I'll push my lift down a little bit to give it some contrast. There, I've pretty much roughed it in, and I've seen how the footage reacts to playing with it. Now I'm going to decide what to keep and to lose. It's okay if I lose a little bit more of the sun. I don't care about that. This stuff is pretty interesting right here. I definitely want her face. And so I'm going to add a node in the middle. And again, I'm going to just play with the curve, see what I can do, and adjust that a little bit. That looks pretty nice. I'll bring my shadows down to be nice and rich there. Maybe add a little saturation back in. That's looking pretty good. One thing I might do also is add another node and I can add a window to her face. This is something that's a little bit easier to do in Resolve and I have a lot of tracking tutorials to show you how to do this, but that's something that I would do for this shot. And then again, I can grab my curve and see what looks nice there. Maybe warm up in the gain a little bit just to bring a little bit of attention to her face. This might be a little bit too big. And there we have a finished shot. Let's do it one more time on this shot. This time I'll do it manual. You'll see on my scopes, nothing's really clipping. Everything's pretty much in the middle. And this is something pretty common. If you shoot a shot that isn't a super high contrast, like high dynamic range shot in a log format, everything pretty much just lives in the middle. And that's okay because we can just push the lift down a little bit, push the gain up a little bit. If there's anything that's really bright, like the side of this jar, that's a little spike right here on the parade. I can push the gain up until that starts to touch 1023. That's something pretty bright. I'm gonna push my lift down a little more. Maybe add some saturation. So there we go. We kind of have it roughed in. We have the brightness, contrast, and saturation pretty roughed in. Let's see what we got. Maybe I'll add a little bit more contrast with an S-curve here. Make it pop a little more. I like that. It depends on the look you're going for. That's pretty good. So we've roughed it in. We've kind of played with the image a little bit. See how it reacts. Now we got to decide if we need to keep or lose anything. I think we can pretty much keep everything and it'd be all right. Is there anything we don't like about the shot? See, maybe the only thing is that I feel like right here on her neck is a little bit bright. Uh, it's also kind of bright over here. We could darken the corners. And I mean, that's just a stylistic thing. Again, it depends on the look you're going for and stuff, but maybe we could just darken right there a little bit. Maybe I'll add another gradient to this side to just darken the edges a little, bring some focus in just a little bit. You could do this in two different nodes, but I'm gonna try it in one node. And if these are soft enough, I probably don't even need to track them, honestly. Yeah, so here's the difference. Pretty subtle. If we wanted to track those windows, we could, but that's the general idea. So again, here's what we had. And here's where we are now. So yeah, that's pretty much the basics of grading log. Pretty much it seems really scary because you're starting with this desaturated, really flat looking image. But once you start to play around with it, it's not all that bad. So hope that made sense. Hope that helps. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. If you like this, hit like. And for more post-production and color grading tutorials, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. Also, if you're looking for LUTs to help you grade log, we have a whole bunch of free LUTs available at groundcontrolcolor.com. Okay, that about does it for me. My name is Casey Ferris. I will catch you next time.